Immediate Accounting 5A, Bond Pricing, Present and Future Value Tables. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, St. Louis Test Prep, our email address and the website. Cost Accounting for Dummies is my book that will be out in March of 2013 and you'll see on my website that I'm teaching a free online course that will be ongoing uh, at least every month, possibly every several weeks. This is a bond pricing uh, method that I really don't prefer. I don't think it's very clear, but it's on the CPA exam all the time in this format. And so I wanted to mention it. This is bond pricing using present and future value tables. And the concept here is that if you have an investment in a bond, it provides two cash flows. The first is the interest payments you receive and if you, it's a corporate bond, which is typically the one tested on the exam, it's typically semi-annual, a semi-annual payment or twice a year. The other payment that you get is your principal, your original investment gets repaid at maturity. So here's an example. You buy $100,000, that is 100 $1,000 bonds. So a one $1,000 bond times 100 is what I'm trying to say. The bond pays 8% a year and it's due in 10 years. Now there's some phrasing here that can cause some confusion. In the question that a student sent me, the, the question said purchased to yield. It also may say priced to yield. And when you see that term, in this case it's purchased to yield 10%, what their question is referring to is yield to maturity. And another way of saying it that I use is total return because there's two types of earnings for a bond. Now I talked about cash flows up here, but now let's think about earnings or income. The first is just like the cash, you get an interest payment and if it's a corporate bond you get that twice a year. However, you also get another return and again this is a, an earning not just a cash flow, earnings. You may have a gain on the bond if you paid a discount and a discount means paying less than face amount or you might have a loss on the bond if you paid a premium. A premium by definition is when you pay more than the face amount. Yield to maturity or total return in this case is if you have an 8% bond, that is the stated rate of interest on the bond, and you purchase it to yield 10%, which is a higher rate of return than 8%, that means you purchased it at a discount. Why? Because your yield to maturity 10% is higher than 8%, the stated rate on the bond. If the bond has a stated rate on its face of 8%, but you purchase it to yield 6%, a lower rate, you've paid a premium, you've paid more than the face amount, so the amount that you get back at maturity will be less than the amount that you paid, which is why your yield is less than the stated rate. With the discount bond, at maturity, you're going to get back more than you paid because you paid less than the face amount and you're going to have a gain. Now here's the part that I really don't care for that's on the CPA exam. So the solution to how much did the person pay for the bond, assume that you're the bond buyer, how much did you pay for the bond? Well. As we just explained, there's two flows. There's the interest payment and there's the principal that you get back at maturity. And so now we need to use present value. We need to use the present value of those flows. So in the first case, if I take $1,000 times 8%, as you can see in the formula box, that's $80 a year. For 10 years, if I multiply 80 dollars in blue times 10, that's $800 in total interest payments over 10 years. If I go to the present value of an annuity, because it's the present value of the same payment each year for 10 years, I, if I look at the table and I didn't pull it up, you'll find on the table, and you can find present and future value tables on the web, it's 6.1446 and there will be some other rounding there. So if I multiply the $80 that I get each year for 10 years times the present value of an annuity factor, I see that the $800 
if I present value it is worth 491.57 with rounding. Why is it worth less than the 800? Because we're present valuing it. We're putting it in today's dollars and discounting those payments backward at a rate of 10 percent. At maturity, the one $1,000 bond will pay me $1,000, but that's 10 years from now. If I look at the present value tables at the present value of a single sum, one sum, not multiple payments like interest payments, but one single sum, 10 years in the future, discounted back at 10 percent, I'll find a present value factor of 0 0.3855 and if I multiply a thousand dollar face amount times 0.3855 I get today's value of the principal payment I add that to today's value of the total 10 interest payments and I add them up and I get the total paid for the bond one one thousand dollar bond is 87707 so I paid a discount I paid less than the face amount of a thousand, which is why my purchase to yield is higher, a higher yield than my face amount. You'll notice that the, I used 10% in the present value tables because that was the purchase to yield percentage used in the question. If I did the same analysis with a bond at yield of 6% you would see that these amounts would be higher and that the total I pay for the bond, the th one $1,000 bond would be more than a thousand. At a discount it's less than a thousand. So we wrap up the question by multiplying the purchase price for one bond, 1,000, times a hundred to get to a hundred thousand dollars in bonds which is what I do here it's the number in blue times a hundred and I get what I paid for one hundred thousand dollars in bonds eighty seven seven oh six point eight so we have just answered how much did I pay for a hundred thousand dollars in bonds assuming it's an eight percent bond due in ten years and it's purchased to yield ten percent that's the end of bond pricing present and future value tables <coughs> For video textbooks and spreadsheets, not all of which are on YouTube, you can look at the website, our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL. You can email me for a complete list or videos on YouTube that we update as we add videos. For live tutoring and chat sessions, you can go to the website on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And now we have our free online course to teach the book Cost Accounting for Dummies, which will be out in March of 2016. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.